Um, I'm pleased to, to uh, I'm pleased that we have our keynote speaker here from KDE, and uh, Alish is, Poe is going to talk about KDE and its development process, so please welcome him. Well, good morning. I know it's not easy to wake up in a Sunday morning, especially to go to listen to this guy. So I uh, really appreciate you, you coming here. So, um, well, back in March or something, uh, Douglas told me about doing a presentation here. Um, OpenSUSE is always an interesting project that has been orbiting me as in the KDE me for, for for a long time, and well, I'm I'm really pleased to to be here, and and well, to have been here and and talking and listening to you guys, and while well, explaining my my little piece of the, the 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 story. So, for those who don't know me, my name is Alesh. It it can be expanded, but you can call me Alesh. I I am in the KDV uh, board for I've been for three years now. Um, I'm, uh, professionally, I'm working for Blue Systems, where I work full-time developing different KDE technologies. And, well, usually I used to work mostly on KDevelop and KDE Edu applications. Then when I was hired to do Blue System stuff, I started doing more Plasma things. And I started maintaining Discover, which is our software center, for those who don't know. And I come from Barcelona, which is a nice city by the Mediterranean, uh, where I, we're running a, a meetup group called Barcelona Free Software, which is sponsored by OpenSUSE. And I thank you for that. It's really, really nice for us to have you as, as, as sponsors. And well, it's pretty cool. Also, if you are ever in, Bar in Barcelona and want to listen to, about, to talk about Free Software, we might be having a, a presentation of these days. Just pop by and, and, well, see what's what. You can always ask us, and worst case scenario, we can go for a beer. So, um, like I was saying, Douglas told me, let's talk about KDE. And one of the things that I've been doing through my whole involvement in KDE is thinking about the development process, process of somewhat. Sometimes with my KDevelop hat, right? Like, you're making an ID, what do you give to the user so that they can develop things for, or develop KD further, right? Like, uh, KDevelop, by its vision, is not something that should be for KD projects, right? But on the other hand, we understand that many KD developers are using KDevelop as, as, a, as an ID. So you might just as well want to have things integrated properly. Um, on the other hand, I've been a maintainer for different projects for several years, and I've been thinking about how to de how to deliver uh, good applications on on different platforms. For example, uh, one of my involvements, like I said, was KDE Edu. That means Calgebra for me, which is a tiny application, uh, math application I worked on when I was a student back then, and. Actually, for the last five years, I haven't developed the application itself that much, but I've been porting it to Android. But actually, I started porting it to the Nokia N900, then the N9, with all of the changes that, that all of these meant. But in general, being able to have the, to keep in mind the use case of a person who is carrying a computer in his pocket is, is kind of interesting, I think. And on the other hand, with my uh, involvement in Plasma, we've been thinking about, well, how, how do you get somebody like, to spend his or her free time in, in well, working on something so, so sensi sensible, like it can be working on, on, on a shell or, well, tools that are kind of part of the operating system, depending on what is your definition of an operating system anyway. So, um, to get the question out of the way, how to get things done? Well, we basically have developers, which basically mean coders, designers, translators. We need, we need to get together to, to work together and, well, do things. And when I say do things, I mean that, right? Because we have very different products. 
in, in KDE. In KDE, we started being a desktop, but nowadays we have, um, well, we have a desktop, which, I, which now we call Plasma. Um, but we also are, are doing uh, different things. And, well, we need to accommodate all of those because they are all very important, right? You, you need to be able to offer uh, a solution for, for the people who, are, who want to use uh, Linux and to, who want to be efficient when, when they have a Linux and a free software uh, alternative when, when they work. But then to actually get things done, they will want to have applications, right? I mean, to be able to start applications is not everything you need to do with, with your system. You need to, well, manage your files. You need to, well, have a text editors. You need to have, well, many other things. And um, well, we're all, all also developing these. Um, but possibly one of the things that makes special, KDE special there is that we don't really think our applications as something that should be always used by, by Plasma desktops, but it's something that it will always integrate properly with Plasma. And, but n it's not necessarily uh, um, a requirement, right? Most of our applications will work on any Linux, uh, well, desktop environment, but they will also work on Windows or OS X or even Android, right? And we also create frameworks, which, well, normally they are byproducts of our applications and and, and desktop environment, but they can also be something that people can, third parties can, can use and well, leverage, and we're really happy to know they're doing so. So we're working on all of these products, but um, how do we deliver them? Well, currently we're de delivering tarballs, which is something a bit weird, but well, we've been doing it, uh, doing it for the last 20 years, and it kind of worked, right? But, um, in general, it, it helps us. It helps us get things to the users because, well, we have some users. And actually, when any KD developer, if you ask him who is it doing uh, his software for, is well doing it for 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 the users. So we we like to think about them, but it's not an actual true thing that we have users. Actually, you have users that you're getting the the KD software to you and others, right? And, and actually, one, one of the things that I would like to, to discuss in the, well, not today, but in general in the next months is how, how we can solve a bit this, this kind of um, well, difference. It's, it's looking a bit tiny, so you maybe don't get to see it very well. But the idea is that, well, you know very well that graph. We're delivering things to you, we're giving you tarballs, and you're getting these tarballs to the user. Uh, there's some kind of feedback that should uh, get to the developer that we need to make sure that it gets there. Um, I don't know if you think that uh, the whole process is working properly. Um, I think that there's possibly things we can do to improve it, but um, well, it's something that, that we can definitely discuss and, and make sure that we're actually doing the best thing possible. Because in, in, in general, one of the big things that have been important for free software has been its agility to reach, out, reach back to the user and, and to integrate feedback. It's, it's something that we need to make sure we, we keep tight. Um, beyond the, the whole how we get things done, I, I would also like to go through a bit the, the kind of things that we're thinking about when, well, when a developer sits in front of his computer, what kind of things he's thinking about. Um, so, well, I will say a list of things, and I hope, uh, well, it makes sense to you. Um, while we've been working on desktops for, for, for 20 years, we as in KDE, not me personally, I, I was very young when it all started, not that young, but, oh well. Uh, everything is still changing. Uh, a bit like uh, the keynote speaker from, from yesterday pointed out, it's not like 
everything is changing per se, right? It's like more like we're adding things to the pie more than we're getting, well, different use cases. But I, th I think that, well, any developer, well, what, what he thinks about is not about how well he's doing with the things he has, but, well, what things he should be doing better. So, uh, well, first thing, we, are, we were used to having a computer, a definition of a computer used to be something that has a, a mouse and a keyboard, right, and a screen. But uh, actually, mouse and keyboard was something that was quite defining on, on the whole desktop uh, experience. But, well, that's not true anymore. You, can, you will mo most often have these. And then sometimes you have touch, and, and not always. Like, you can have some systems that won't have a mouse, most definitely, and different kinds of keyboards. Sometimes keyboards that are actually on the screen, which is like a bit of a bridge between the two worlds. Um, well, it's something that uh, somebody thinking about how people are going to be using a uh, computer needs to think about. We're also not always even sitting when, when um, using a, a, a computer, which is also something that is, it's quite interesting how um, if you think about the big trends in the last 10 years of, first there was the phone, which was actually the whole opposite of, of the desktop computer, and then everything that has happened in between, uh, well, since then has been quite on, on in between, with the exception of, of watches, and actually watches, I don't think they, they have been all that successful. And in any case, nobody is really efficient in their watch, I would say, so it's maybe kind of out of our scope. But in, in general, uh, there's a spectrum. There's not really like different kind of devices. And well, it's something we're thinking about. And it's most definitely somewhere uh, free software should and could be doing a much better work. And similarly to um, well, input devices, uh, screens have changed completely. We used to have more or less the same screen, a bit bigger, a bit smaller. but not even that much, right? Uh, but now we have different, very different form factors. We have these tiny, well, three, four, five inch screens, and we have setups with big screens, and and actually many of them, and that's actually quite quite common. And many densities. If you've uh, bought a computer in the last two years, maybe you decided against it, but most laptops today in the market will have uh, different densities, which means that you need to make sure that all of the applications will integrate properly with your hardware, and well, it's something that we have worked on, and we could possibly be doing a better work, but I think, um, well, it's quite there, somewhat, to some extent. I'm sure many of you also have problems with this, so, well, patches, welcome. Another thing that has massively changed is, uh, well, the kind of, of, of processors even that people are uh, using. Um, we used to have x86 on all of the devices, and well, the smart, smart people in the, in the crowd will also tell me, and we still have x86 on all of our devices. But in, interestingly, like, we've seen that whatever used to be x86 is still kind of always x86, and then, We've all gotten these kind of dev devices, all of us, and then all of these are not x86, but they're ARM, right? Uh, from a C++, C world, it's something that shouldn't matter at all, right? Like, you should just be using the, ra the right compiler. Problem should be solved. But, but in the end, I'm pretty sure this has been one of the, one of the things that have stopped us to actually properly flourish in, in these other platforms, right? We're uh, used to spending our free time in actually compiling things locally that run on our computer, testing things. But doing the whole testing things on different devices is something that is, is a bit harder for all of us. Uh, there's many different al alternatives that um, try to solve this issue, but in general, we're, we're getting there. Actually, if you're interested, I uh, was working on it on on, on KDevelop for the last month, actually. Uh, I wrote a blog post about it. If you're interested, you can, you can take a look. 
But in general, my, my message here is that everything was x86, and it's still it is x86 except for the fun hardware. Also, yesterday we had a presentation about how there's all of these boards that we could be using. And actually, us as KDE we would be super happy to tell people, yeah, 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 just take one of these cheap boards and, and just zipper install um, plasma in it and it will go work perfectly. But I don't think we're really there yet in terms of supporting the hardware, especially much of the uh, accelerated hardware is, is well, not, not working properly. And, well, on a desktop that people are interacting very, very one-to-one, -one, uh, you want to have the best experience ever, right? And also another difference is that we used to have just the one system, right? Um, well, in the, let's say 2005, I used to have my email configured in my system and that was everything I needed. I had all of my configurations there. It, it, it was fine, it was everything I needed. Today, having a system configured doesn't mean anything, right? You need to have all of your, your information accessible to all of the devices. Uh, it's something that uh, we've been working on, for example, from, from KD Connect. And, and I, I think that it's, it's, um, it's, it's something that we haven't really completely solved yet. I mean, We've done improvements, but we aren't at, at the place where we can say, well, we're at leisure. And another big difference is that since we have different devices and actually not all of the operating systems are available to all of our devices, we always end up having just different operating systems on every different device. So saying, I'm going to only work for Linux, I don't really think it's even that much of an option, right? I mean, it's that much of an option if you want to solve the problems for Linux. But if you want to solve the problems for your users, you need to think in a broader spectrum on, well, how will they be communicating when they're in the walk? Or where, how will they be communicating where, where they're, when they're sitting at home? Because if we don't do that, it's going to be others doing these choices for us. Namely, well, Google, Facebook, which are doing very good products there, and well, they're clearly competing with us, and we should be possibly doing a better job at, at that as well. And possibly another, another big change we're, we're seeing in this whole Linux world is that we used to have all of the software uh, coming from the distribution, which was our whole security model so far, and it looks like it's not going to be the same for, for, the, next, for the next years, right? So, well, we need to keep in mind that this is a situation that we're going to be in in the next, well, one, two years, and, and we need to be ready. We need to push the technology to, to be up to speed to make sure that we're delivering quality products like we've always done. And now, well, we run in circles, as in. I'm not going to actually run in circles, but what I want to transmit to you is this is all fucked up, everything is changing, and we, need, we have so much work to do, which we're doing, but, well, it takes time. So how are we doing it? How are we going to solve all of the problems I've, I've been outlining here? Well, first of all, we have Qt, and we used to have Qt when we started 20 years ago. Uh, most of the problems we have today, most of the problems I outlined there, it's problems that every Qt uh, user has, even Qt as a product has it, right? Like input devices, it's definitely something that they've, they've cared about, different, um, different screens, different number of screens. It's, it's all problems that, that, that need solving. And, and well, we're not alone on that, which is always a nice thing. We also have Kirigami. Kirigami is a framework we started working on for like a couple of years ago, I would say, maybe one and a half. But the, the idea is that uh, when you're writing an application, you don't really want to think, you want to be able to think about other form factors, right? And well, the frameworks we used to have up to the point where, uh, well, frameworks where, what, you can 
technically run the applications on other operating systems. It just looks really horrible, right? So uh, Kirigami offers us a possibility to design applications that will work on different form factors, and which is kind of what we are doing. We're, uh, for example, Discover, the software center, I uh, rewrote it last year uh, to, to use Kirigami. And actually, out of the box, it works on the, on the Plasma phone, which is, which is kind of cool. Uh, another interesting thing about Kirigami is that when if a developer comes to me and says, I want to work on an application that is going to work on a phone, I don't have to tell him, well, choose between, well, working on Plasma desktop or Android, right? Because, because actually I, I, I would say it's kind of one of the big problems that the whole free software mobile community had, right? Like, all of them was, were really open, but if you wanted to get an application there, well, you really had to go through all of their set of requirements. Um, well, their own set of, of library they depend on, the whole set of um, APIs they use that were like coming from a higher level of existence, while they were well doing mostly things that we, we already have today. Like Part of the reason why you will possibly not see any KDE application on the Yola market, for example. Yola is, is based in Qt, right? But it's based on a Qt version they froze at some point in history. And, well, we cannot stop all of our development because they're in an old version. So together, Kirigami, different ways to distribute application can possibly agilize uh, all of that. Uh, Wayland is also something that is coming. It's something that we've, uh, actually, it already feels a bit like a joke, right? Like, Wayland is going to solve it. Actually, I don't know if it's a, a thing here on OpenSUSE, but, well, in Plasma meetings, the Wayland is going to solve it. It's like, yeah, all right, you're shitting me. But um, we're going to have Wayland, like, now. Actually, one year ago, you could already test it with, with Plasma. Uh, today, you, you can test it and even be happy when, while using it. Uh, other desktops are, are doing it as well. I think GNOME um, defaults to Wayland nowadays, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Wayland is not important because it's the new cool technology. Wayland allows us to target a much minimum, uh, minimal, uh, much more minimal set of dependencies that will allow us to run a, an operating system on, on a system, right? Like the amount of drivers that are required to set up a device with, with X11 is actually quite huge. And well, as, as soon as you start thinking about not desktop devices, you really want to start scratching things from, from the very beginning. And, and Wayland actually like delivers quite well there. It simplifies a lot the the picture of how uh, Linux desktop environment works, so that's pretty cool. And in the, in the same line, we also we will have Halium pretty soon. Uh, I really like the project, that's why I put it here. Maybe it's not such a big deal, but well, the idea with Halium is that most hardware vendors today are really caring about Android when they want to get a device into the market, right? And it's not like they even care about Android that much, right? They won't even give support on the device for that long. If we expect these people to uh, create drivers specifically for, for the Linux old school kind of things, well, we're going to be disappointed. Actually, us as a community, we've been disappointed rep repeatedly. I mean, not even the Raspberry Pi, which is like the coolest, most free software hardware over there, isn't delivering a super polished uh, solution in, in, in this front. So I think that there's definitely, well, room for improvement. And what Halim offers us is to say, okay, let's not bother asking all of these people for permission to use their hardware, which is what it ends up being, these uh, asking for things but just getting whatever they're delivering to, to, for, for Android and seeing if we can reuse it. And well, there's been, there's been quite some success now. Also, Halium is a conglomerate of a couple of 
of communities that, that wanted to solve this problem and are solving this problem together, namely Plasma Mobile and a couple of the Ubuntu phone, well, forks, let's say. And, well, they're working together, they're doing things. And I think it would be pr pretty cool if somebody at SUSE popped up over there and said, hi guys, we're doing ARM things and we're awesome. Let's be awesome together. And then, well, changing a bit the subject, uh, what we were talking about before when I was telling you all of the new requirements we're, we're having, uh, what we're saying, seeing appear for the last few years, most of them it meant there's less, more, more complexity, right? Like there's a lot of complexity that we didn't used to have and now it's not even part of the daily thing. It's something that is required for most of our, many of our users to have a successful experience when using their computers. So it needs to be up to speed, right? So we need to have a good continuous integration systems that, uh, well, test things on one side, having application run tests locally. That's something that we're actually like very actively pushing our developers to do, including myself. But, um, well, it's something that I'm pretty sure you're also executing as packagers of our applications, which, well, if you're not doing, bad boys. And then there's OpenQA. I am with the SUSE people, so I have to mention it. It's, it's really cool every time I see the, the project. I, I really want to use it more. And then I start wondering why am I not using it more. I don't really have a good answer to that, though. If you have a, a good answer, you can tell me. Uh, I don't really know what's missing so that we integrate it properly in the whole development process in KDE. I know that you guys are testing KDE things with, with Plasma, uh, but, well, communication, like I said in the beginning, it's something that we, we need to sort out. Also, we need to make sure that it's actually part of the development process, right? Something that I can reproduce locally, something that I can reproduce, uh, well, Having an, an iterating process is something that is super important, at least for me. Also, OBS, it's, OBS is one of these projects that in, in academy for the last, academies or uh, annual event, it's one of these technologies that keep popping up and I'm not super sure where, where, why we're not using more. I think that we probably want to use it more. I'm not super sure why not. I, get, I could tell you my personal experience, but I don't know if that's super well, relevant here. <laughs> But in any case, I think that we want more of it. We should have more of it. Let's see if we can find ways where it actually makes sense. Because in the end, it's mostly about um, getting the developers in the right space where they can actually start producing, right? I mean, developer is this, the developer is this weird kind of asset that, I mean, he's either quite idle, because developers also like to drink beer, watch movies, but if they have all of the tools they need, they, they, they start producing things, and well, the easier it is for, for them to actually get things out there and, and get the feedback, the, the more possible it is for them to say, okay, I'm not going to go for a beer with my friends, and I, I will stay home. By the way, that's an actual conversation I've had with many people, like, why are you doing more KDE things or these things you said you would do? I am going out with friends because I have an actual life. That, that's something that happens. I'm sure it's something that happens to you too as a, well, open to the community, right? But, well, facts. Also, one of the big changes we've seen in the last few years is that Linux is a blooming round time. And actually, we never, or I never looked at, at Linux as a runtime, right? But, I mean, clearly, uh, having standard uh, ways of executing things on Linux, it's something that the world wants. And actually, if the world wants something, the world gets something. It's not something that we can really argue about it. I mean, it kind of uh, started by just running things on the servers, but then, well, Docker happened, and now Windows is integrating Linux executables. I mean, that, that's mind-blowing, isn't it? Who isn't mind blown by Windows running? See, everyone is. So it's, it's, it's impressive. And actually, I mean, we need to be part of this party, right? Um, 
One of the things that have frustrated me the most in, in the, my whole Linux uh, experience has been how, well, we, we've had the concept of repositories in Linux for decades, right? And in 2007, we already had, had them for decades, but we never had the, well, the strength to come together together with, with a proper application store kind of concept. And actually we are still struggling. Like the solution for that has been the upstream project actually. And it is coming together now. Maybe let's say it was coming together a couple of years ago, right? But it was very frustrating for me to see how Apple came up with the whole app store thing from one day to another. And, and we've been struggling massively without being, and, and we've been so slow at, at giving alternative to that because, because the sad truth was that we were not user oriented enough to be able to, to cater to that. Well, that was kind of a, a reason for me to start working on a software center. So maybe I am feeling a bit too passionate about this sub, uh, subject or at least more than, than you guys. But in general, what I want to say here is that much like AppServe, where I think 10 years ago, the Linux runtime is a thing now. And, well, we are good at Linux, so we should make sure that we make the best out of it. I mean, I know there's some kind of, uh, well, there's fears, but, well, there's risks everywhere in life, like waking up is a risk. But in general, trying to get up to speed and being able to, well, deliver to people executables is something that is gonna happen and, well, we want to be there. And in general, with a strict plasma hat, I think that we want to execute any applications on Linux, right? I mean, we do have our own applications, but we never really claim that the right thing to do was to use Qt or KDE applications on a KDE desktop. Obviously, there will be some things that we get to integrate much better on, on those systems. But, I mean, that's more of a coincidence than an actual thing. I mean, while if you ask me how, do I, uh, how to develop uh, an application properly uh, for Plasma, I will naturally tell you just use Qt, use our frameworks, and you will be set for life because they're awesome. There's people doing awesome things in Linux, and I think that it's very important that we remember that we want to integrate these. And actually, Linux is not even about, well, old school applications anymore, right? Like, we have uh, maybe a big percentage of our time, let's say 70, 80% is, depends a lot on you guys, is spent on the, on the web browser. And actually, integrating the web browser is, is possibly one of the things that, uh, we should be doing much better. We actually have some kind of, of, of approach there, but um, well, it's, it's, working. it's w work in progress. But in general, when we talk about um, supporting a better Linux uh, runtime, we also need to remember that it's about running be uh, applications better to make sure that systems are always up to date and to have that we need good UIs, we need to make sure that the user knows what he's installing and where it's coming from because it's actually something that, well, it used to be part of the problem but it could be now. And, and to give information about w what the applications are doing and how they're interacting with the whole operating system, right? I mean. The fact that it's easy to install an application, it doesn't mean that it's safe or even a good idea, right? So we need to keep in mind that this is a part of the solution and, well, leave the, give it the, the love it, it, it needs. And like I was saying, we need to reach out to all our operating systems. We cannot think that Linux is everything. I mean, even Linux is not a thing, right? Like Android is Linux, but running a Linux application on Android is quite an impossible task, at least on a, on a normal Android phone. So we need to be flexible, we need to learn that saying, well, setting very strict barriers is not going to help anyone, I think. And well, it's something we need to work on. And same, different operating systems, different form factors, while we need to uh, think about how 
people will be using their, their, their computing experience, what, what, what it will be. And like I was saying, web as a first class citizen. So uh, I don't know if you saw one of the developments that has happened in Plasma recently was the addition of something, well, a module that integrates Firefox and Chromium or Chrome with, with a Plasma shell, like, well, being able to know at least what tabs are open and well, there's also some nice features like extracting, extracting MPRIS information from, from them. I think that this is something that was sorely missing and if we can make good uh, use of it, I think that we can, we can embrace much better the, 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 the users that could come on the next few years. Now, uh, how do we improve? And this how do we improve, I mean, in a strict open SUSE to KD kind of way. Although it possibly applies to many other communities. Well, one of the big things is that we need you guys to speak up. So if there's a problem, if there's an issue, you should be saying so. It's, it's not really useful to know that People are unhappy, but you don't really know why or what is exactly the, their, their pinpoints. Actually, like, non, nothing in KD itself is, is closed, right? Like, any of you could go today and go to the Plasma mailing list, to the Plasma IRC channels, and, well, speak your mind. Especially if you're kind and smiley, it always helps. But um, actually, we encourage everyone to be part of of the conversation. Even sprints, we host, uh, well, physical in-person sprints for, for our meetings. I think having you guys there would be something really interesting. And, and actually, I've always wondered why people from, from distros, it's not something that is really specific to OpenSUSE, but people from distros usually don't feel compelled to, to attend, right? I mean, I, I have the impression that if I was coming up with with a product using something, I would want to uh, talk to them and to be part of the discussion. And I think that it's, it's, it's something that, well, it's something that could change and possibly would change uh, in the next few years. So what I did now was to go a bit through the bug report. It's a, it's a bit ugly, but it's not my fault, it's Bugzilla's bug, bug uh, fault. So I went through the, bug reports of a few KD components, and I draw this nice pie chart. Here we can see the OpenSUSE RPMs is the orange thing on, at the bottom, right? So part of your voice is what developers will hear from, from the bug trackers, because, well, the, the, the discussion is not really happening in, in mainly this, possibly because the conception of mailing list is that you actually are discussing C++ clicky clacky things, right? But, um, well, if the discussion is not happening in, happening in mailing lists, then it needs to happen in bug reports. So here we can see that maybe roughly, let's say, 15, 20% of plasma bug reports are open SUSE. Having a very big number here also is not very good. It just means that Maybe there's lots of users reporting the same bug uh, over and over. But, um, well, it shows there's a presence. It shows there's, there's interest in, in, in getting things. Um, another product we can see here is, um, is Krita. Krita is a project that is very actively used outside of, of our normal comfort zone, let's say. Like one of the big, uh, the big yellow thing is Microsoft Windows, uh, which is something quite unique in, in KD projects. Well, um, Microsoft um, Windows users are, are making themselves heard in this community. And this means that their issues will be part of the fixes that the next release is going to have. So, and by the way, OpenSUSE is the well, ugly blue thing in, at the bottom making sure that you're a big part of the pie is making sure that you're being heard. And, well, like I said, I feel strongly about Discover, which is, well, my project, at least in Plasma. And, and here, 
OpenSUSE is not there. OpenSUSE is not there is possibly because it's part of the unspecified, which is the big red thing. But um, while I looked it up, we had 11 bugs uh, reported in Discover for, well, in the whole history, which is about two or three years, but still. And, and my complaint here is that this possibly means that OpenSUSE users are not really using Discover at all. And I haven't had a proper discussion with, with anyone about why it's not an acceptable solution. And, and actually this makes me kind of, well, not fun. But in the end, when, when we talk about uh, how you would like to communicate more, it's about first explaining why things don't work, when things are not working, making things reproducible. Um, like I was saying uh, before, uh, I've been working on a bit uh, improving the develop development process so that um, if the users are going to be having a different uh, well, set of requirements or uses of, of their application in the different operating systems, we should kind of embrace that. So I integrated it in, in kdevelop, which is our ID. And if we have a bit of time, actually, we are going to have a bit of time. So if somebody wants, we can, we can look into the, the video. But in general, well, you know there's a problem. Also, I don't really know, like, all of the distros, and I kind of think that you have the same thing, have their own bug tracking systems, making sure that, uh, well, bugs are transferred upstream, and, and making sure that, well, developers know everything that is going on there. It's something important. And while you can say, well, everything is open and you can be going through mm, well, OpenSUSE bug reports, well, remember that we have maybe 15 downstreams, and while they're not all as big and awesome as OpenSUSE, well, they all want to be there, right? And well, we need, we need to have this kind of feedback and we need to have these kind of, well, things going on. And, well, that was my talk. If you have any questions, you can have it now. Otherwise, I'll show you my video. Good morning. Um, just wanted to know, do you spend most of your resources on the actual uh, desktop environment, or are there certain projects, uh, certain applications that get more attention than others? I know you, for example, you, you work on uh, this Discover project. Um, uh, one of my favorite KDE apps is Digicam, but mm -hmm. it seems like it doesn't get a lot of you know, work on it. So, uh, so how does that work? Well, in KDE, we don't set resources. Actually, as a free software community, we don't have the ability to tell people what to work on. We do have sprints. We've had several Digicam sprints, for example, which is a space where we can actually like help people get things done in a very specific area. But in general, we don't tell people to, to work on things. We can, well, set some kind of expectations, but that's as far as we get to go. Obviously, like, uh, for example, you mentioned Discover. I'm working in Discover in my paid time, so one thing you could do is to convince my boss that <laughs> Digicam is the best thing ever, and also the worst thing ever, which means that it needs improvement, right? Because, well, when things are, are quite good, usually it's hard to get developers on them, which is kind of interesting, right? At least you need to have people like pulling the cart. But in, in general, the big and direct answer is we don't get to uh, make thing, uh, people work on things. We can, we can try, but we don't get to do that. What, what we can do is, is set some resources for it, and we actually do. And you're encouraged that to help. And actually, a bit of you can always help on a free software project. I mean, I would say a KD project, but like any free software project. And don't even think, I am not doing that because I am not a developer. This is not really part of the conversation. You can always help doing documentation, which is super fun. You can always help doing drawings. You can 
whatever you're good at doing, I'm sure that there's, uh, well, any project can, can make sure that this is useful, unless it's crochet. I don't know if that would be a thing. But like PR, it's always needed. Actually, PR is one of the big problems in, in, in free software, right? We need people who actually are capable of pushing projects without being the actual people doing the features, which incidentally, people doing the features are not very good at communicating usually. But yeah, hope you, I answer your question. Okay, I've got a question particularly about LTS versions. So we have an LTS version of Plasma in Leap. And, you know, uh, looking at our bug tracker, um, you know, it's the largest single component that has issues, you know, reported bugs. It's higher than even our catch or other bin. Um, obviously, your graph kind of shows that too, in the sense of, you know, our OpenSUSE bugs are a huge chunk of that pie. So the kind of the two questions are, what is really being done to maintain those LTSs? Because they don't seem like they're getting much love or attention once that initial release. They, I get the feeling they've just been thrown over the wall. And what is the plan for future LTSs? You know, when's the next one and how will, be that, how will that be better than the current one? Yeah, um, good questions. So, a bit kind of like the last answer, we've been sending patches. I sent a patch to the Plasma 5.8 uh, branch last month uh, for Discover, right? I mean, things are happening. It's not something you coordinate though, right? Like, you will, we don't have a person responsible for, for LTS. Maybe it's something that could be useful. It's not a figure we have at the moment. But in general, if something is believed that, if something a developer believes that if they put time on will make a big impact on the user base, I'm sure he is going to do. So if you tell me as, as Discover maintainer, we have this big, big problem with Discover 5.8 and we need to have it solved, uh, I will spend time on it, right? But we need to know that this is an actual big problem. To give some perspective, uh, we had a huge issue with the la latest Kubuntu LTS, which actually was not even using our LTS. And we also had to spend some time on that. So it's not really a matter of... What, what is really important about us for an LTS is actually that we have the certainty that if we work on it, it will go to the user because there's nothing more... Uh, worse for a developer that to be working on a fix that might not be hitting the, the users. And actually that was the, the kind of, well, reasoning behind of, of doing an LTS. I mean, people are actually going to be releasing this, um, this Plasma 5.8 for a long time. So we can just as well keep it awake. And if there's things to, to, to have improved, well, do it. Now, if there are big problems, well, talk, talk to the people, I mean. I have never heard... But we have, you look at the pie charts. You know, we've been finding those bugs upstream as well, and they're not going down. Well, escalate it. I mean, it's always a matter of how to make yourself hurt, right? I mean, if you look at um, any project's bug report system, you will see a list of crazy problems. Um, that doesn't mean that you can take an action on all of them. I'm not also not saying that um, they are crazy problems, but uh, for a developer, it's a lot of time that you need to spend to reproduce an issue on um, often different platform, make sure that you can reproduce it, fix it, and then submit it. Uh, so having some kind of hand-holding, especially from, from the platform to say, okay, I can reproduce this, give me a, fi a fix, I send you a patch. I think that this kind of conversation can be much more agile than just saying, well, it's reported there. I mean, be happy because, well, I mean, you need to know what the actual pain points are because it's a matter of, I have these resources, how do I allocate them so I can make my users the happier, right? But, um, well, it's a, it's a wider subject, so it's possibly, yeah. In, in general, though, uh, 
it's worth mentioning, I think, that uh, the reason we did Plasma LTS, 5.8 LTS, was because OpenSUSE said we're going to be having a long-term release of, of our leap, and we want to, to be supporting what you're offering fresh, which I, I believe it's a very good idea, right? Like, if we're having a lot of, this, of the discussions about how we want to distribute software better, it's because users are not using actual fresh supported versions of software, right? Like, this is one of the problems of Linux today. And, and being able to offer a solution was, was very good for us. And actually, like, for us, it's very frustrating because the only distro that picked as LTS, Plasma 5.8 LTS, was OpenSUSE, right? Which is kind of not fun. But, well, it's not something we really have a say on. But in general, we do want to have another LTS. I suggest that somebody who is confident with OpenSUSE's release schedules gets in touch with the Plasma team, and we've discussed about having another one. We should definitely make sure that it aligns properly with you guys, because I think it's worked well. And actually, like not doing so will mean we will have a, an LTS release that will not have a distro behind. So, well, knowing what the problems are is going to be much harder, or or at least harder than, than it is today. And like you pointed, well, there's things to be fixed, right? But you need to have people telling you, well, this is a problem, remember. Which is, I guess, not a nice work for you guys because you, no, no, nobody really likes to be the kind of, well, person going, ah, meh, meh, meh. fix my thing. But, um, oh, well, life, such is life. But in general, if you want to talk further about it, we can, we can, uh, even here or, or by email back home, I think it's an interesting subject and doing a better job there would be really fun. Yeah. Did I answer everything you asked? So you mentioned um, KDE community is beginning to look at OpenQA. Uh-huh. Uh, it was somewhere about slide 13, I think. <laughs> so uh, given that in the past KDE has been criticized because in the tarples and in the SUSE RPM source packages, there are, were never really many uh, test scripts in there. Uh, I've noticed in the latest um, SUSE source RPMs, KDE source RPMs, there are OpenQA scripts in there, which means you're beginning to test openly. It's an indication you're beginning to test openly. Uh, given the thought that there aren't many human beings like say for people blocks with two heads and unfortunately a developer and a tester uh, tend to be two different people, um, my question is what is the acceptance inside the KDE community, not maybe the broader KDE community, not only the developers but maybe you have some testers as well, uh, what is the acceptance, perceived acceptance current perceived acceptance of OpenQA? So I think that we're probably looking at the whole thing the wrong way. So early on, when I defined developers, I defined developers as, sorry, who was, made the question because I lost you and I don't know where to look now. Thank you. Um, I defined developers as, as people who make software, right? So I wouldn't say there's first developers and then testers. Actually, what I would diagnose as a problem is the fact that while it's possibly part of the source RPMs you have, it's not really part of our Git repositories, right? So it's not really part of our Franca lingua, if you know what I mean. We need to make sure that these things are part of the development process, that the developers uh, can, can have access to the, these things, and having access means it's in my Git repo, and this test is not passing, so I don't get the green light. I mean, it, is not about reaching out to these other community or because like adding uh, commu uh, communication barriers seldomly gets its thing solved. So I would say that if, if we want to do it properly, it needs to be part of, of the development process and the development tools that we use on a, on a daily basis. And it cannot be part of the source RPMs because like I said before, like there's 
20 something packages that appear out of any of our releases, right? And we cannot be responsible for everything that all of these distros do. In fact, one of the problems we are having is that distros patch random things on our server, right? Which, I mean, something is, sometimes it's done by somebody thoughtful, sometimes it's done because it didn't work and somebody was angry, right? So I think that if, if we want to have this kind of feedback loop working properly, we need to have the same communication space. And to be the same in the same communication space, it means to be in the same Git repositories, to be in the same, well, chat rooms. And, and if we can do that, I, I, am, I am sure that we're going to see uh, good results because, because when things start working well is when you see that the people who take care of creating the software are actually committing not to break things. And if they know when they change something that something breaks, it's uh, interesting back and forth. Oh yeah, so, sorry. So both GNOME and KDE have uh, something like an App Store program and the term App Store also fell in your talk somewhere. So I was wondering, isn't it perhaps time to consider Linux distributions an App Store in their very own right? Uh, especially considering that uh, KDE and other applications connected to that are like delivered within a day or so already. Do we really need KDE App Stores or GNOME App Stores for that matter? I don't know. I mean, with a very KD kind of perspective, we had KD Look, KD Apps, KD, uh, well, KD Look and KD Apps for 15 years. They, they were there for a very long time. And I have never seen them as a competitor to whatever my distro was doing, right? I mean, if you want to get backgrounds, you want to get icon themes, it can just as well come from a website. Uh, I, I kind of agree like that distros are like an app store. That was like when I meant what I meant when I was angry that Apple did it was that well we had all of the information and we had all of the applications for a very long time. We just were not careful enough to put them into a nice digestible user interface that people would would be using. Um, so now I guess you're talking about um application so stores and I think that these stores are doing a good job and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But the same way we have 25 distros today, and when I say 25, I mean probably more than 100. Uh, I know that people are going to do, to be delivering applications in, in systems that well, are just compatible with actually what the distributions are distributing today. So I think that what is really important here is not how KDE sees um, application distributors. I mean, I can give you an answer from a very discover maintainer point of view, but that's not really useful. I think that the useful conversation we can be having now is what is an operating, a Linux operating system today and what are the things that we share among each other so that we can create solid products together without being fighting about the most menial things over and over. One of the big differences that I see with the new cross-distro formats that we didn't have on the pre-cross-distro formats times is that it's not really a discussion about whether DEB or RPM is better. You can have them all, and actually, you will have them all. Like, most of you in five years will have snaps on your computer, you will possibly have flat packs in your computer, and you will have distro applications on your computer. And possibly there will be distros that are not distributing their software on, on applications. So I, I think that we need to just acknowledge that things are changing and, and see how we can work best together, and to actually make sure that we're actually working together truly, like we're not adding invisible barriers or social barriers, but actually making a Linux that can work on any people's computers and actually can solve everyone's needs. 
but it's not this tool that is really fun to use when you're a sysadmin and you're watching movies at home. Okay, so if there's no much more questions, I think actually there's no more time. Is there? Possibly not. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. And if you want anything, you can send me an email. I'll be happy to answer you there as well.